Um, uh, Alex Crook out and about doing a lot of work for us uh, on the show as always. Gareth Southgate has been speaking this morning, Simon, at the ECA General Assembly and is saying, I will not coach in the next year, for sure. I'm certain of that. I need to give myself time to make good decisions. It's an important step and I need time. Um, uh, maybe Eric Ten Hag can breathe a bit more easily. Maybe Man United fans can. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Give me a break. There are, but, United, there are some on. United Come fans on. out there that would probably take I, 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 I don't know what to say to that because I find it perplexing. I mean, I've got nothing against the fellow. He's a Crystal Palace. He was a very good player for Crystal Palace. Went on to do decent things as a footballer, playing for his country on a number of occasions. Went to Aston Villa, had a good career. Um, but there is no parallel universe where anyone, I would debate anybody to suggest to me why why Gareth Southgate would be this, the saviour of the Manchester United football club's consistent failure over the last The most successful years. England manager since I, Alf Ramsey. I understand that. I understand that argument. I understand it and I know that it gets advanced. We didn't win anything, so we can follow a long list of people that didn't win anything. The, the, the thing that he managed to achieve was the repeated snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. I don't think we had that under Ron Greenwood. And I don't think we had that under other managers, That whether we, you know, we're talking about Capello or we're talking about Roy Hodgson. I know that argument will be trotted out. But I also know, without any bias or motivation, that we had draws that people cannot believe, that, that, that we haven't been more successful as a result of these draws and won something. We had opportunities to win tournaments in almost home tournaments when we're winning in finals uh, and we didn't take the advantage. Um, and we also had a, a massive decline in the, 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 the level of international teams that we pitted ourselves against. So I think that, wonderful, he was a great politician for the FA. He was a great message carrier. He was very dignified. Yes, he created a culture that should have been there in the first place and how terrible it must have been for other people that he didn't manage to deal with that, that he managed to get rid of the nonsense about who would sit with one another at tables and who liked one another <laughs> inside camps. There is more than but that. But I don't Come see... On. Man United is... Could he not do a job for a Premier League club? Maybe. May, I, don't, I, I genuinely do not think he's a top draw manager. I don't. I think he had an embarrassment of riches at England and I think he had to set them up and send them out. That so you, was, you that were was, team as a top candidate for any no, top job? No, I don't. Right. No, I don't. Okay. I, well, I certainly don't see him as a top six manager. Um, I know lots of people and all the people that support him and like him uh, will pop up and say whatever they have to say and that's their opinion and they're entitled to it. My opinion is that Gareth Southgate was very fortunate to have got the England manager's job. He did a decent job in terms of managing the morale, but we missed opportunities. We wasted periods of time. We were in three tournaments that we could have got something out of and we didn't. And um, and I think the criticism that was levied at him at times was unfair. But I also think that you have to judge people by what they achieve. And if you want to judge it by being a participant in the low bar that was set previously, then I, I'm sorry I'm not in that camp. And I don't see many... I don't, I don't know how anyone serious... Any serious-minded individual would suggest that Gareth Southgate can fix the malaise at Manchester United. OK, another bit of news. It appears that Ryan Mason has decided to stay at Tottenham. Uh, there was an approach, as we understand it, from Anderlecht in uh, Belgium. But Ryan has said, no thanks, fine where I am. So Ryan Mason will carry on uh, at Tottenham, of course, working alongside Ange Postecoglou. To me, that's it. Ryan and Postecoglou seem a, a decent double act. I, 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 d I, d I don't know. I think that Ange Postecoglou needs some better coaching staff. I think there are things about Ange Postacoglu that are brilliant as a manager, but I think a manager is as good as his number two and good as his coaching staff. I think Alex Ferguson had some very significant people alongside him in the dugout yeah. to be able to counsel him. I think Guardiola's got the same. I'm not sure that Ange has, and I'm not sure, with all due respect to Ryan Mason, that he is the solution. But hey, what do I know? You know, you know, Ryan Mason's a very nice fellow, suffered some severe adversity in his life. Sure. He's got plenty of gumption. Mm. But I think if you're going to suggest that... Um, that it's a coup for Tottenham to keep him. I'm not sure I'm in that camp either. That's been quite an hour, hasn't it? It's a miserable bugger, not I? <laughs> John, I know. It's lovely being with you this morning. John Stones, Rick Astley, Rafael Nadal. They're all in the show this morning. It's 11 o'clock. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.